On the 2nd of September 2023, India launched its first space probe to study the Sun. The solar mission is called Aditla L1. It's going to travel almost 1 million miles and join four other spacecraft that are currently circling a point in space known as Lagrange Point 1. But this Indian mission is different from the rest. How come? Experts call this mission a unique observatory, all because it combines instruments that can shed light on not one, but on three crucial questions. The first one is how stars like our Sun sustain their insanely hot outer layer. The next mystery that confuses scientists is how exactly the Sun's magnetic field produces such severe solar storms. And the last one is how the variations in the magnetic field of our star affect the atmosphere of our planet. Aditla L1 has seven instruments that can help observe the layers of the Sun. For example, with the help of electromagnetic and particle detectors, the probe will examine the Sun's corona, which is the outer layer of the star. While doing it, the spacecraft will be hovering at a safe distance from the Sun, around 92 million miles. Researchers hope that the mission will be able to gather data on the properties of the corona and figure out what causes coronal mass ejections. Those are enormous bursts of electrons, ions, and magnetic fields. The probe is also expected to examine the Sun's lower atmosphere and the boundary between the atmosphere and the interior of the star. Everyone is waiting for the data from the mission with bated breath, especially from its Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope. No wonder, it can help to study solar winds and the way they accelerate, as well as coronal heating. This telescope can also potentially provide images of the Sun's disk in the near ultraviolet for the first time ever. This disk is the outer visible layer of gas and dust surrounding the Sun. One of the mission's tasks is to help scientists figure out how the dynamics within the corona and the Sun's lower atmosphere drive space weather. You see, our star has a massive and pretty complex magnetic field which wanes and strengthens again reaching its peak every 11 years or so. When it happens, the north and south poles of the field flip. The current cycle is predicted to reach its maximum in 2024 or 2025. It means that solar activity is going to keep rising in the next few years, making this period perfect for collecting data. There are five Lagrange points in space where the gravity between two bodies, in our case, between the Sun and Earth, cancels out. It means that a spaceship can remain there with minimal use of fuel. And L1, which is the goal of Adita L1, offers a great view of the Sun as a benefit. The Indian space probe is going to join four other craft orbiting L1. The satellite is supposed to reach its orbit in the middle of January. And by the end of February, scientists hope to start getting regular reports. The probe is expected to send around 1,440 images per day to the ground station, where these pictures will be analyzed. Adita L1 isn't the only spacecraft exploring the Sun. Probably the most famous one is NASA's Parker Solar Probe. Its main goal is to touch the Sun. It's flying closer to the surface of our star than any other spacecraft before. Astronomers hope that this mission will revolutionize our understanding of the Sun. For one thing, the distance between the probe and the surface of our star is more than seven times smaller than that between the Sun and any other spaceship. Plus, over seven years of hard work, Parker is supposed to complete 24 orbits around the Sun. And at its closest approach, the spacecraft will hang out around 3.9 million miles away from the Sun which, in this situation, is very close. And its speed will be about 430,000 miles per hour. If you moved at this same speed, you'd get from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. in just one second. The Parker Solar Probe has its instruments protected from the sun by a 4.5-inch thick carbon composite shield. It can withstand temperatures of around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. But what exactly does the probe do? It dives into the scorching atmosphere of our star, having to withstand insane heat and radiation just to give us a glimpse of what this atmosphere is like. In 2021, NASA announced that the probe had flown through the corona, the sun's upper atmosphere. Parker managed to take samples of magnetic fields and particles there. 
It was the first time ever when a spaceship touched the Sun. The probe was designed to travel within 4 million miles of the surface of our star, tracing the flow of energy, studying the heating of the corona, and exploring the acceleration of the solar wind. Hopefully, we'll get the answers to a few long-standing questions, like why is the Sun's corona much hotter than the star's surface? What makes the solar wind accelerate? And what is the source of those high-energy solar particles? It's hard to believe, but we actually live in the Sun's atmosphere. At first sight, our star looks like a bright, self-contained sphere hanging out somewhere far away in space. But that visible edge is just the beginning. The Sun's hot corona reaches way past Earth, all the way to Pluto and even beyond. You can't normally see this corona. It's visible only during a total eclipse. But believe me, it's there. The corona has its own weather. Billion-ton coronal mass ejections occur there. High-energy radiation storms rage from the Sun's upper atmosphere. Relentless solar winds can reach a speed of a million miles per hour. And every comet, asteroid, and even planet in the solar system is affected by those elements. The Sun still has a lot of surprises for us. For example, recently, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory has discovered a large coronal hole in the southern part of our star's outer atmosphere. The temperature there can reach millions of degrees Fahrenheit. Such giant coronal holes can have a dramatic impact on our planet. They mean that the Sun produces and sends off streams of gas that can easily reach Earth. This can result in geomagnetic storms triggering disturbances in the atmosphere. At the same time, such solar flares also produce some of the most beautiful phenomena on Earth, the aurora borealis. But since the flares affect our planet's magnetic field, they can have an impact on GPS mapping, satellite television signals, and even cell phone transmission. How bad it gets depends on the intensity of solar flares. Another rather frequent occurrence of this natural phenomenon is power grid outages. Luckily, Earth's magnetic field does a great job protecting us from solar flares. But sometimes, the flares are just too powerful to go unnoticed. Some of them can release 10 million times more energy than the most powerful volcanic eruptions. Within a few minutes, one flare can give out billions of tons of charged particles. Solar flares are also insanely hot. Their temperatures can reach several million degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the following news may sound scary, but there are also super flares. In comparison to them, our sun's bursts of radiation are small potatoes. Super flares mostly occur in young and active stars. In 2016, astronomers saw such a phenomenon. A star 1,500 light years away from Earth produced a flare that was 10 billion times more powerful than any of those that burst from our sun. It doesn't mean we're safe here on Earth. Even our middle-aged sun knows how to produce super flares. But while young stars can have them once a week or even more often, for the sun, it's once in a few thousand years. And still, if people don't figure out how to protect the planet, just one super flare can shred our ozone layer and wipe out life on Earth. Or not. <laughs>